All right, we're gonna continue doing more work on atoms today. Uh, refresher review, this is Mrs. Mancuso, and this is to help you get ready for the chemistry regents. All right, so um, if we pick an element from the periodic table here, we can look at how it behaves as an atom and how it behaves as an ion. So let's say I pick magnesium here. Magnesium has a mass of 24 and atomic number of 12. All right, so I have an atom of Mg. It has a mass of 24 and atomic number of 12. So again, what that tells us is the 12 is telling us the number of protons is 12. 24 minus 12 equals 12, and that's the number of neutrons. And then the number of protons has to be the same as the number of electrons because I have an atom. When I want to do a Lewis dot diagram of magnesium, I take Mg, I look up its electron configuration, so here under Mg it says 2-8-2, and what I care about are the valence electrons, the outermost shell of electrons, and that is 2, the last number. I put two dots, both right at the top of it, to show that it has two valence electrons. Now the the order in which we put the dots, so whatever my element is, I always put, think of each of these as two per side, okay? These are the places that you can put the electrons. There can be a total of eight electrons that are in the valence shell, so there are eight spots around the outside. The order in which we fill these spots, this is spot one, so if there's only one valence, you would just put one dot in that location. If there are two valence, you fill in two dots, just as I did with magnesium. If there is a third, you put it here. If there is a fourth, a fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. And what's really great is that as you move into bonding, these really tell you a lot about the atom. So I'm gonna choose nitrogen, and I go over here, and I look up nitrogen, and it says, 2-5. That means there are five valence. So I put one, two, three, four, five. That's how my Lewis dot diagram would be for my atom of nitrogen. But what it also tells me is quite a bit more information about it. I know there are three open spots, one, two, three, and nitrogen very often forms three bonds so I could have a hydrogen here sharing one electron, a hydrogen here sharing one electron, and a hydrogen here sharing one electron. And if I wanted to show a Lewis dot diagram of this sharing of electrons, so this is what happens in a covalent bond, there's two ways I could do it. I could show the five dots of nitrogen and then the three dots of hydrogen with an H next to it. So that's one option to show NH3, the covalent molecule, or I could show the two dots on top and then a bond represents the two electrons being shared between hydrogen. Okay, all right, a little bit more on atoms and ions. I'm gonna go back to my magnesium and my magnesium if I look up here in the top right corner, I see that the, the most common oxidation state is a plus two, which makes a lot of sense because we said that this was 282, so it has two valence electrons, and it's a left side loser. It's on the left side of the periodic table, um, which means that it's a metal, which means it's most likely to oxidize, and oxidizing is losing electrons. So if it lost those two valence, it would become Mg plus two. The size of the atom, here's my Mg. It would have um, 12 protons and 12 neutrons in the nucleus, and it would have two, eight, two. One, two on this one, eight on this one, and the first number, two on that one. Now, if this became an ion, it would lose this outer shell. So its size would decrease. It would only have two orbitals. So here's my nucleus with my 12 protons and my 12 neutrons, and then I would have two here 
eight here. And the two on the outside would be lost. So Mg plus two has lost two electrons and it also loses radius. Its radius becomes smaller. Now if I take something different, something from the right side of the periodic table, um, let's say fluorine. F, its atomic number is nine. Its mass is 19. So again, just for a little review, this is the number of protons and it's gonna equal the number of electrons as long as I have an atom. And 19 minus nine will give me the number of neutrons, so that's 10. So in the nucleus, I have nine P pluses, so my nuclear charge is nine, and I have 10 neutrons. And then I look here at the configuration, and it says two dash seven. So my first orbital has two, and my next one has seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so the radius is pretty small. And what happens is this one's oxidation state, so what it's likely to become is negative one. So if this became a negative one, I would change from being two seven to being two eight. Negative one means gaining one. And then this orbital would just become a little bit bigger and it would have one more on it. So again, this isn't one moving, it's these same electrons, but it just gets a little bit larger. So when you form a negative ion, you get larger because it is reducing. Reduction is gaining an electron, so when you gain an electron, your radius increases. All right, when you do a Lewis dot diagram for either Mg plus two or F minus one. This is an ion, and I like to say doing Lewis dot diagrams of an ion is as easy as A, B, C, D. A stands for atoms, B stands for brackets, C stands for charges, and D stands for dots. I need to include all of these when I am doing an ionic compound or an ion. So A is the atom, so I put Mg, that's my atom. B is for brackets, I put brackets around it. C is the charge, I put the charge on it. D is for dots, the dots represent the valence. Well, Mg was 282 and it lost the two, so it lost its dots. So I do not put dots um, to represent valence electrons on a positive ion. F minus one was 27, the negative one tells me it gained one, so now it became 28. So I do my atom, B I do my brackets, C, I do my charge, and D, I do my dots. I now have eight dots. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. So that is how you do a Lewis dot diagram of an atom versus an ion and how ions are different than their atoms. Join me again for more review.